Hi guys, it's Nancy, and today's video is going to be on um, foiling with regular dies. So this question gets asked a lot in the Foiling Snobs Club, and so we're going to do some of that with the Glimmer Hot Foil Machine. Now the process is going to be the same, whether you're using the Go Press and Foil, the Foil Press, or the Glimmer Machine. You may just need to shim your uh, machine based on... Um, the tightness you have between your hot foil machine and your die cutting machine, okay? So we're gonna practice. One thing you're gonna notice is my tape plates are together. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video on that, but I changed it. Um, this is what I normally use, Cricut Heat Safe Tape. Yesterday, I picked up this um, scissor heat resistant tape. It's the red, so we'll see how it holds up. I picked this up at uh, Joann's and I used a coupon. <clears throat> so I wanna show you guys that, so. We'll, we'll stand the test of time here and see how it does. Now, I normally do quite a few foilings before I have to replace my tape, but eventually what happens is it rubs up against the die cutting machine and then they start to peel off. So sometimes you gotta replace that. But I have a number of different um, dies here. These are not hot foil plates. These are just regular dies. And then I have a couple of different kinds of paper we're gonna try to, to hot foil on. So the first one I'm gonna do is this I wanted to show you that on this particular machine, you would not be able to successfully do a um, slimline. So this is a full slimline die from Spellbinders. And I just want to show you that it's just too big, even if you would put it sideways. And I don't recommend doing this because you're going to have uneven pressure at the top and the bottom here where the frame of the hot plate is versus the silicone. So I would not recommend doing a large slim line on this machine. <coughs> Excuse me. However, I have a mini slim line here from Spellbinders. This is called the Sweet Leaf. And we are only going to do the the die portion. Now you want to always face the cutting side up. How do you know which is the cutting side? It's the side with the raised edges. If you do it cutting side down, you risk cutting into your silicone mat. So you want to make sure that it's cutting side up and you can see those are raised, this is flat, okay? Certainly you could try to foil this side if you wanted to, but again, then you're Cutting side is on your silicone mat, which you don't want to do. And notice a lot of manufacturers have these little holes so you can punch out your dies. Or some companies put the name of their company, so it could say Spellbinders on there. That would hot foil. So I don't recommend doing that. I just recommend doing this side. Whatever is raised or the cut lines will be what foils. So this is going to be a super fine um, foiling here. Now, just for the sake of saving time, I did pre-cut some foil. So we're not going to do these in any fancy colors. I just have some red hot foil here. Let me find one that's going to be long enough. Here we go. Okay, so you want the raised side facing up, flat side facing down. Then we're going to put the foil pretty side down. And again, just for the sake of saving time, I'm just going to use regular size A2 paper here. Okay. Now I may need a shim here. We'll find out in a moment. You know what? I should probably put this at an angle, actually. Just a little bit. Because <clears throat> that'll make it easier going through the die cutting machine. Okay, and then we're going to let this count down for 60 seconds. I will bring you guys back and we will run it through the die cutting machine and we'll see what we have. Okay, 60 seconds is up. So we're going to disconnect this from our heating platform and slowly roll this through. This is the Spellbinders Platinum. Black is only sold at scrapbook.com. Now, I feel like I may not have had enough resistance there for foiling. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take a peek, but I'm not going to reveal the whole thing. Oh, I just moved it. Well, we'll have to see what it looks like now because I touched it. 
Okay, so here we're gonna reveal it, and actually, that foiled pretty nicely. Now you can see here that it's just the thin lines, okay? And that's the result you're gonna get when you foil dies. Um, this part here would have been the extra pressure on this side of my machine. It's a little bit heavier pressure. Now what you can't do is you cannot now take this and line this up and cut it. Because if you cut it, you're gonna get what you see here, which is you're going to cut on the cut lines. So these are the actual cut lines. So if you try to run this through and cut it, you're gonna cut out that whole foil design, which you don't want. Now this particular die comes with a matching mini slimline border. So I can cut that part out, but I would not recommend trying to cut out what you just foiled. It just won't work, okay? All right, let's move on to um, word dies because a lot of people ask about word dies. So I have some Catherine Pooler word dies here. Um, and I want one that has, hold on. I wanna show you the difference here. You want one that has a shadow. And I know some of you are like, what do you mean a shadow? Hold on. So these word dies from Catherine Pooler. Thanks, happy birthday, hello. Uh, thank you and celebrate. I don't have a shadow die for these. It's just the die. When you cut the word out, it is what it is. You can certainly foil these and you'll get the word. However, again, if you are aiming to try to cut it out, you won't be able to. Now this, this word die elated comes with a shadow die. So I can hot foil this and then cut it out with the shadow die. So let me demonstrate that for you. So again, cut side is facing up, foil pretty side down. I'll put my cardstock on there. Actually, I'm gonna turn this this way a little bit. Now, if yours under foiled, you'd wanna put a shim in there, okay? Um, I think I'm okay. It's a very fine foil, which is, which is great for me. Um, if you put a shim in and it overfoils, you're going to need to remove that shim. Okay, so you guys know the routine. We're going to count down 60 seconds. When I come back, I will reveal that, and then we'll cut it out with the shadow outline die. Okay, guys, we're back. 60 seconds is up. So we're going to see how this word die from Catherine Pooler hot foiled. And then we're gonna die cut it out with the shadow die. Okay, that again was a different die instead of spellbinders. It's Catherine Puller. So again, different companies have different thicknesses. So we'll see if it foiled. It does look like it foiled. So now I'm going to show you guys a cover plate, and I think cover plates are the ones that are going to look the coolest. Again, I want to do a little bit of an angle here. Cutting side is always up, flat side is down. Foil is pretty side down. Put our paper on there. Okay. Oop, just yank that foil right out of place. Okay, so we're gonna let that heat back up. All right, let's reveal this word die. Okay, and you can see how fine that foil is. 
but it is foiled. You can read the word. I have a little tiny patch of overfoiling right here. A little flaking. Perfect. Gone now. And then this one has the shadow die. <clears throat> so now we can cut this out. I don't want to take that word die. If I try to cut this out, do you see what happens? What I mean? It will cut on those foil lines. So everything you just foiled will be lost. You will not be able to use that. <clears throat> so if you want to do foiled words, have the shadow die. Or, you know, if you have a scan and cut, you could use your scan and cut. So now I'm going to tape this shadow die around it. And we're going to die cut this out. <clears throat> So you can see now it is cut out and foiled. So keep that in mind. You probably have a giant pile of hot foil, or sorry, dies. And, you know, I know hot foil plates are not inexpensive. These things can add up very quickly. So use, look at the dies that you have. And anything that's a word die that has a shadow die will work really great as well. So let's see how this cover plate does. Cover plates I think are the best because they already give you a really neat design whether you cut them out or you letter press them. Remember you can also do letter press with your hot foil plates, but I think foiling them is gonna come out even cooler. And the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in my foiling friend. If you don't have a foiling friend, I will link it down be below. It is very easy to line up things. And I'm going to show you the benefit here because I'm going to use a double layer background plate. So here's my foiling friend. This is designed by my friend Tracy. It is in her Etsy shop under JoJo Papers. Um, you can also download it for the um, foil press and the go press and foil it does come in us and uk so, uh, us and metric sizes you um, download it from etsy it's a couple bucks totally worth it but you'll see here how it's going to keep everything straight for me so i'm just using a little washi tape to tape that down it's on my plate and when you print this out make sure your printer doesn't change the size settings sometimes the printers do um you know, fit to 100% or fit to page or whatever, you want to print it as you download it. And there's a straight version and a wonky version. And the wonky version is nice for this reason here. We're going to be doing something kind of sideways, right? If this goes through your die cutting machine and it goes bum, 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 you have the risk of it, first of all, skipping or double foiling the lines, or in this case, cutting, because we're talking about cutting plates here. So we're going to put this a little wonky on there. So when it goes through the machine, it's that way. And then I'm going to grab another piece of paper here <clears throat> and another piece of foil. Okay. And... We know that this is lined up perfectly along the top and the left side of my little foiling friend here. And this is a two-step um, two that I can do with this, um, this plate. There's two plates. They can be used individually. They can be used together. So kind of like layering dies. If you have any of those, this is going to be, I think, pretty cool. Okay, so same process. I'm let that heat up. And let's reveal this other guy. And this hot foil plate is called 
uh, lights on Broadway cover plate. Look at how neat that is. Okay. And again, this little overfoiling, it's more like uh, flaking. It's not overfoiling. It's just foil caught in the little circles there. And you can see how easily just taking a sand eraser very lightly to the top takes all of that off. So it's not hard to remove at all. Only the foil that's pressed in with the dye will remain and any of that extra foil or foil flaking, foil dandruff will come right off. But look at how cool that is. If you have some really cool cover plates, that is 100% completely foiled. It's not cut through. You can put, again, a little bit of extra pressure if you want. Just be careful. You might get over foiling just by putting an extra paper shim in there. But that came out pretty, pretty neat there. Okay, so for this other plate I'm going to show you guys, we're going to do layer one which is called the Stitch Your Diamonds cover plate. And then layer two is called Cross Your X's and O's cover plate. So you can use these individually or they pair very nicely together. And since I'm not cutting them out, I'm foiling them. Let me grab another piece of foil and we'll see if we can get them to foil with two different colors of foil and see how it turns out. Keep in mind, too, that different papers have different results. Um, I'm just using Hammer Mill 100 pound uh, premium color cardstock, which is in my Amazon shop. But um, depending on the thickness of your machine, you might need to go a little bit lighter on paper. I don't recommend going any heavier on paper. Here I have some black glossy cardstock, which I've hot foiled very well. Mirror cardstock hot foils very well. So test your different. Um, foils and your different card stocks, just make sure you're always using hot foil. So um, deco foil, hot foil, crafty crita, hot foil, blue bonnet, hot foil or hot stamping foil or foil quill foil, cricket foil. Those are all hot foils. And if you're not sure the difference, I have a list in the foiling snobs club that breaks it down so you know which companies have hot foils versus toner foils. Toner foils will not work in these hot foil machines. So the Deco foil, uh, Thermoweb foil, um, like the Gina K, that won't work because that's regular toner foil. It's not hot foil. Okay, so this is layer one. I'm going to let that cool down a little bit. Different thicknesses of different dyes are going to give you different um, results. Different papers are going to give you different results. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's reveal this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to get a different piece of hot foil here. Okay, I'm going to save that. I'm going to take this off. Now this you're just going to print on regular paper. It's going to get cut up. It's going to get beat up. It's going to get foiled on. It's going to get torn. That's perfectly normal. So you're just going to print on regular copy paper. Once you download the foiling friend and you own it, you can foil it as many times as you want. And again, I don't want this too thick because this is a cutting plate. So if I have this too thick, there's a possibility it could cut through my paper. So when you're doing this experiment, keep that in mind. Now I did not do a great job lining this up, but we did okay. Let's see how this does. Pretty side of the foil down. We're gonna reuse this. I'm gonna again try to line it up. Now if I was doing this for real, for real, I would use tape and tape this all together but we're just doing experiments here today. And this is how you learn what works and what doesn't work. Sit down and have a play day and figure out, hey, how is this gonna look if I foil it? And again, these weren't meant for foiling, they were meant for die cutting. So they look great either way. So here is that one cover plate. Here is a slimline die. Here is a word cut out with the shadow. Now you can color these in with markers, pencils. You can do um, 
what do you call it, um, ink blending. And if you wanted to foil the inside, one of the things that you could do is use a Zig two-way glue pen. Um, a glue pen remains tacky when it's dry. So if you use this Zig two-way glue pen, I can color in the word elated, and then I don't even need heat. I just take that same foil or scrap of foil and I can rub that and it will it will it will stay in place. So it's a no heat method of coloring in with foil. And you want a two-way tacky glue pen to do this. Because you want it to remain tacky. when it dries. Um, Tombow Multimedia is a good glue. The one with the green lid because it's a two-way glue pen. Okay, so we're just gonna, I did that real quick. We're gonna let that dry a second. It doesn't take very long to dry. And then we're gonna test our second cover plate here. I'll be back in 60 seconds. All right, 60 seconds for me, two seconds for you guys. All right, so this is the second cover plate, which kind of layers well, the Catherine Pooler cover plate. Stitch diamonds and cross your, stitch diamonds and cross your X's cover die plates. You always want to give that a second to cool down before you rip the foil off. You want that paper and that foil to bond. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. That is really cool. So you guys can see there is gold and red foil. The design is really cool, but you guys see that? It is double foiled, okay? So the foiling friend helps to line up when you have things like this, whether you're hot foiling or using your dies. But I want you guys to experiment. A lot of you guys took the foiling class from me two weeks ago, and you have your Go Press and Foil or your Foil Press machine or the Glimmer machine. Grab your dies and try it out. Just remember the cutting side needs to be up, not down, okay? All right, so let's see how this is, if this is dry now. So I have a little bit of two-way glue on there. Can you guys see that? It's a little glossy. And that remains tacky to the touch, okay? So now we're just gonna take a little scrap piece of foil, and all we're gonna do, it doesn't matter what foil, this will work with toner foil or hot foil, is we're just gonna burnish that. So we're just gonna take our finger and rub that. You can already see that foil sticking on there. So if you wanted to fill it in without heat, that's the way you do it. If you wanted to do it with heat, you can buy a mink pen, which is a toner pen. You can use um, Jelly Roll glaze pens, as long as it says glaze on it. Any color will work. We have clear Jelly Roll glaze, we have white, we have black, any color. Um, you can do that, but then you need to run it through a heat source, um, which I would recommend a laminator or a mink. Um, I suppose you could do it on the hot foil machine, but I don't recommend doing that. I recommend a laminator or a mink. Okay, so let's see here. All we're going to do now is just give that um, glue second to adhere. And you can see. And again, I just did this real quick. You would want to take your time and color it in a little better. But you get the idea of how that foil sticks. Any place that's still tacky... The foil will stick to and you can fill in or you can go back in with more glue pen and say, hey, I'm not happy with those results. I can go back in with the glue pen and recolor over anything that the foil didn't stick to. Give that a moment to dry, then go back in with the foil and reburnish that. So there are a number of different ways you can use dyes or color in with foil. I have another video that shows other substrates you could color in with, with the foiling using a mink machine if you're interested in that video. 
And hopefully you guys learned something new and you're pulling your dies out now and you can see how dies and cover plates um, and cutting dies and word dies, how you can go ahead and hot foil any of these with your glimmer, your go press and foil or your foil press. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you learned something new, please give this video a thumbs up. I would love to have you as a subscriber. If you're not already one, click that bottom right hand corner and click the thumbs up so you get uh, or click the bell so you get notifications whenever I post new videos. If you are new to my channel and you don't know about our Facebook group, we are called the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. We do all kinds of paper crafting, stamping, foiling, toner foiling, hot foiling, um, and it's just a warm, welcoming group, and I invite you to join us, Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep on foiling. Bye.